Hi guys, welcome back to Edgeway channel. Today we will be discussing a different topic that is antifungal drugs. So this video will be having four parts. So this is the part one video and for the complete lecture you should have to see the part two, part three and part four. So we'll be moving to the class. So what are antifungal drugs? Antifungal that is against the fungus is also known as antimycotic because mycosis is the word related to fungus antifungal or antimycotic drugs these are the drugs used to prevent the growth and multiplication of fungi why this drug is used because fungus proliferate in the body and they grow and multiplicate and they produce many features that is not included in the physiology that is they produce many pathological problems what is fungi? Fungi is the eukaryotic and they resemble the mammalian cell in many features. That is, they are having pronucleus with several chromosomes with containing DNA, mitochondria, and ribosomes. So, development of antifungal drugs without toxicity to the host is very challenging because the fungal cell resemble like the mammalian cell. They have the cell wall, the cell membrane. The cell wall is the different factor. Cell membrane. The DNA, the nucleus, the mitochondria and ribosomes are somewhat related to the mammalian cell. So, this is a very big problem to develop antifungal drugs. And these antifungal drugs are more toxic to the host than antibacterial drugs. Because antibacterial drugs are designed in such a fashion that they can only harm the bacteria or the bacterial metabolism. But antifungal drugs can inhibit small, small mechanisms in the mammalian cell also so this is a very problem with the antifungal drugs so what is fungal cell wall fungal cell wall is a rigid membrane that is composed of chitin remember chitin chitin is a very important factor chitin and what is fungal cell membrane fungal cell membrane is a lipid bilayer composed mainly of ergosterol sorry for the spelling it's ergosterol but human cell membrane is mainly composed of cholesterol so there are many antifungal agents that act against the ergosterol mechanism so that there is no fungal membrane fungal cell membrane formation and that leads to the death of the cell of the fungus so the pathogenic fungi in humans and animals are mainly of two groups that is they are classified into two groups for the easy studying of the pathogenesis they are actually the molds molds and the yeast forms Mold form as the main example is Aspergillus fumigatus. That is the fungus which is having mold form and that is pathogenic. And the yeast form is the Candida albicans. Exceptions. There are different or another class which is having mold form as well as yeast form. They are called as dimorphic fungi. And the example is Blastomyces and Histoplasma. Sometimes uh, they grow like a yeast in the host and like a mold in vitro condition. That is, whenever we are culturing, they grow as a mold, and in the natural growth, they will be like what? They will be like the yeast host, like yeast for uh, pattern of growth. So, these are the types of fungal infections. Fungal infection is also known as mycosis because myco is the word related to the fungi or the fungal infection. Two types is the main fungal infection that is superficial and the systemic mycosis. Superficial means what? Superficial means it affects the skin and its appendages and the mucous membrane. So the main groups of uh, fungus which is producing the superficial infections is known as dermatophytes and the uh, systemic or the super sorry so the superficial infection is produced is dermatophytosis. The dermatophytes which cause the dermatophytosis are mainly microsporum trichophyton and epidermophyton also the, the ringworm infection and tinea pedis is produced by the these categories dermatophytes now there are non-dermatophytic fungi that cause secondary skin infection that is they cannot cause the primary infection but whenever we are affected with another disease this can cause secondary infection that are candida aspergillus or cryptococcus they are actually the systemic mycosis but they produce secondary skin infections so moving to the systemic fungal infection what is systemic fungal infection that means this fungal infection is occurring in the system of body 
it can affect the deeper tissues deeper organs etc histoplasmosis cryptococcosis coccidiomycosis aspergillosis are the serious issues coming so this is more serious and more danger and more life threatening under normal condition healthy animals overcome fungal infection successfully because whenever we are treating with the correct antifungal drug the infection may subside and the animal become healthy so the fungal infections usually occur in an area where we have used more broad spectrum antibacteria that is whenever we are treating an animal broad spectrum antibacterial or cytotoxic drugs what happens the normal bacterial flora decreases so the chance of infection of the fungi is increased or the that area is very suitable for the fungus to grow that is the main problem so the important properties of an ideal ideal antifungal agent that is it should have a close contact with the fungus that is it should make some problem with the fungus so that the fungus cannot live more okay now the second property is keratolytic property that is it have to lyse the keratin that is it has to lyse that layer which is affected by the fungus so that we can clear the area and our cells can easily clear the other materials formed due to the fungal infection next one is high penetrating capacity that is it should have to penetrate the fungus and get inside the fungus and produce more dangerous activity to the fungal life cycle so that it can break the fungal cell and decrease the infection so these are the ideal properties of an antifungal agent so the antifungal agents mainly target the four area that is they will be targeting four area or they will be attacking the fungus by four mechanisms the first one is they will be inhibiting the biosynthesis of membrane steroids the main steroid in the cell membrane is ergosterol so they will be inhibiting some enzymes which is related to the ergosterol synthesis or they will be inhibiting the ergosterol transportation so that biosynthesis of membranes will not happen so it cannot live properly so the next one is membrane permeability that is they will be creating some pore in the cell membrane so that the ionic balance across the intracellular and extracellular surface changes this leads to the death of the cell the next one is they will be attacking the cytosine mechanism that is they will be deaminating the cytosine or they will be preventing the activation of cytosine and they will be inhibiting the enzymes related to the cytosine activity so that no more DNA replication happens, no more RNA synthesis, no more other things related to the internal mechanism of the nucleus happens so that it leads to the deterioration of the cell and that leads to the cell death. So the next thing is they can inhibit the fungal cell wall. We know that fungal cell wall is made up of glucan polysaccharides and chitin. So whenever the chitin formation or glucan formation is inhibited, that means fungal cell wall is not happening properly so that the protection of the cell is not happening properly so that the macrophages and other polymorphonuclear leukocytes can easily kill up the fungal cell so these are the main four anti-fungal agent targets so seeing the cell wall synthesis caspofungin is a drug that inhibits the cell wall synthesis now membrane function amphotericin b mainly inhibits the membrane function there are many functions for the cell membrane in a fungus so amphotericin b will be inhibiting the membrane functions now flu cytosin is actually an antifungal drug that can inhibit the cytosine formation or the cytosine mechanism which is very important inside the nucleus now terbinafine terbinafine is a drug that inhibits lanosterol synthesis lanosterol is a stage in the ergosterol formation or related to the ergosterol mechanism so it causes a problem in the lanosterol synthesis so the fungi deaths now azole drug this is a very famous and a very commonly used antifungal agents that is azoles they actually inhibit the ergosterol synthesis ergosterol is very much important in the normal bioactivation of the fungi and it is very important in the word we have discussed ergosterol c the biomembrane the membrane steroid is ergosterol. So whenever we are inhibiting the ergosterols, it can lead to the death of the fungi. So this is the basic idea about the fungi and here our part one ends. So 
we will be discussing other all properties other classification and the mechanism of classification and the examples of drug in the second video thank you